He was a mystery white boy. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the life and career of Jeff Buckley. Jeffrey Scott Buckley was born November 17, 1966, in Anaheim, California, to a musical family. Buckley was raised by his piano and cello-playing mother and a classic rock-loving stepfather, after his own dad, cult folk and jazz singer Tim Buckley, left prior to his birth. The young Buckley picked up his first guitar at age five and later played in his high school jazz band. In his late teens, Buckley studied music in Hollywood and began singing backup and playing guitar for diverse bands. As success eluded him, Buckley tried his luck in New York City. After performing at a tribute concert for his late father, he had a brief stint with the band Gods and Monsters in the early 90s. <laughs> Buckley then started performing covers and his own material at coffee shops and clubs. His sets incorporated musical styles like folk, jazz and rock and were influenced by artists he had recently discovered. It was thanks to his weekly residency at Chenet Cafe that people took notice of his singing and guitar playing. His budding fan base helped pique the interest of several labels and landed Buckley a contract with Columbia Records in 1992. The Live at Chenet EP featured Buckley singing with an electric guitar and it dropped the following year. Eternal life is now on my trail. Next, for his full-length debut, Buckley created a fuller sound by including drums, bass and string arrangements. Grace was unveiled in 1994. And like his earlier work, that effort comprised both original material and cover songs. Most notable was Buckley's version of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. The baffled king composing which later gained massive popularity and became known as one of the finest examples of the singer's work. This is a last goodbye. I hate to feel the love between us However, Grace was not a hit upon its release. In fact, it barely made a dent on the US Billboard 200 and did not find radio popularity. Those mixed reviews turned into praise after Buckley went on the road with his band over the next few years. Looking out the door, I see the rain fall upon the funeral mourners. While honing his vocal chops and impressing crowds, Buckley received accolades from well-respected artists and was awarded one of France's highest musical honors. He even returned to Chenet on occasion and spent time playing bass in another band. There is a child sleeping near his twin The pictures go wild in a rush of wind Buckley began writing and recording with his musicians for a follow-up album in 1996. New songs are coming up in my chest and uh, they're, they're fighting their way out there even though I have no time but um, that's, pre that's pretty much all I'm obsessing about. When these sessions proved unfruitful, Buckley began working on his music alone. During this time, he did end up collaborating with Inger Laurie and he contributed to an Edgar Allan Poe inspired the double skies, disc. In early 1997, so Buckley began performing some the new leaves, songs. He eventually crazy. took up a weekly yeah. residency at Barrister's Bar leaves, in Memphis, Tennessee and continued recording demos on the side. Soon, Buckley was due to start rehearsals with his band. However, on May 29, 1997, he decided to take an evening swim, and this proved to be a fatal decision. Six days later, Jeff Buckley's body was found in the Mississippi River. An autopsy later confirmed his cause of death to be accidental drowning. It was also found that Buckley was not under the influence of any substances when he died.
The double album Sketches for My Sweetheart the Drunk was released the next year, under the supervision of Buckley's mother. The collection was well received by critics, who found that its demos and almost finished songs highlighted a variety of genres as well as Buckley's vocal range. I know Other posthumous releases included the live albums Mystery White Boy and Live a Olympia, a collaborative compilation with Gary Lucas, and the deluxe limited edition of Grace Around the World. That project was accompanied by a Buckley tribute documentary, which set the stage for other Buckley-inspired films. As the new millennium dawned, Buckley's Grace achieved gold status in the US and was expanded into a 10th anniversary legacy edition. His music also returned to the charts. After Hallelujah was covered by an American Idol contestant, Buckley's rendition topped Billboard's hot digital songs. His voice and vision have already inspired many and will undoubtedly move scores more. Thanks to its use in various media, we'll never have to say a last goodbye to Jeff Buckley or his music. Now.